Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another BJ and Co Minecraft video. We're continuing on our Sky Factory 3 achievement book guides and uh, we've got all sorts of fun stuff planned for you guys today. Initially I was going to do a very simple one, just pick one of these things and get going and then things just sort of worked out together and I was putzing and I'm like no you know what we're going to do a 3-4 here. We're going to give you guys three different things that we can get going. Well two too but we'll be very close to hitting this third one as well too so today we're going to talk about automated crop harvesting and i'm going to show you what i'm doing specifically with my system to reduce my um draw on power and as a result it will get us very close to finishing this ender pouch uh link to an ender chest because i'm going to get the ender chest that we need and then finally because grinding for blaze rods has been a pain in the ass we're going to start talking about this one right here we're going to talk about flying so First things first, because you're gonna need blaze rods to get the ender chest that I'm using in this, let's talk about flying. There's a few different ways in this mod pack to go about flying. There's jet packs, there is a thing called an angel ring, um, and there is your supremium, or yeah, superium uh, set of armor will give you flight as well. So superium, takes a lot to get you need a whole ton of inferium i'm probably getting fairly close to that um, but you also need some nether stars to make that happen so i'm gonna gonna pass on that one this angel ring here is not too bad you need some gold you need some glass that's easy you need a lassoed bat which is fairly easy to get you need a cursed lasso with a ghast inside of it that's going to be more of a pain in the butt because um though we've got a setup for that but to make the cursed lasso we need a drop of evil which drops from wither skeletons which we haven't set up a farm for we haven't gone to the end um so the easiest way i find to get these uh, the flying going is these wonderful things called jet packs so we're going to be looking at here just the conductive iron jet pack it can only store a certain amount of charge but uh what it does here is just uses some conductive iron and goes from there so let's take a look at what we need um the base pieces well we need we need this leather strap in the middle which is fairly easy to make you just need four leather if you have an issue getting some leather you can get it from loot bags but you can also get it by using a uh, drying basin here that uh, you can make from integrated dynamics it's a fairly easy one to get uh, if we just jump on over into here you just need some planks you need some bark and you need some dye or ink sacks which i mean if you've got an easy setup like that you're gonna have ink sacks coming up the yin yang um so that leather strap's fairly easy the next thing we need is we need two of these iron thrusters and uh the basic gears are very easy you just need sticks and stones and you don't have to break any bones right yeah. um so you need two of those you need some redstone you need the conductive iron now the conductive iron is fairly easy to make all you need is one iron one redstone in an alloy smelter will get you the conductive iron you can also use your smeltery or all sorts of stuff but i just went with the easy route so we you know at this point the things that we've been doing so far we've got redstone um essence automated and iron essence is not fully automated but we can just throw them into the cloche when we need more so fairly easy to get lots of conductive iron that way you know i got a full stack sitting in there waiting for us capacitors those you have to get through um you can get them through loot bags or you can craft them using copper some redstone and some gold nuggets so again you should be able to easily scrape up the resources for that one and then the redstone conduit here um, is just some redstone alloy with the conduit binder which we already know how to get and the redstone alloy is just redstone and silicon together in an alloy smelter so not too bad at all and same with molten redstone here oh you just melt the alloy okay yeah, so you have to go through the alloy smelter to get that one so again very easy you need two of those guys and then we need another capacitor some more conductive iron and a strap and two of those thrusters and we get our jetpack <coughs> bless me and i'm not fooling myself at all so that jetpack um you will need to charge it before you can use it because i mean sure i could i can throw it on my body right now it goes in your chest place but i can't i can't do anything i'm set to hover mode and i'm my engine is depleted but how do i how do i power it up well these capacitors are fantastic you can just grab it drop it in and boom it is starting to fill itself up and i won't even wait for it to get all the way through well it's 80, only eighty thousand. it's not too hard we get that we get that and there we go so my hover mode is off right now but i can just hold spacebar to fly 
and uh, up in your top left you can see it says how much fuel you've got so you can keep your eyes on it so now it should be easy for me to get into the nether find another fortress and start farming some blazes which is what I need to get the blaze rods because I have been working on blaze rods here I have finally got the aid I need to get an ender thing and that is just using my loot bag opener set to make epic loot bags but as you can see this game's been running for 213 days now and I've kind of been letting it sit why is there I don't recall starting that off topic Ben stop getting off topic um so that's flying the uh if you want i mean we've started with the very base level there are higher levels of the electrical steel the energetic and the vibrant so these just take the previous tier and then needing higher level of um ones like this one is electrical steel so you need coal powder and iron and silicon so it's just working your way up i always like to and i did with the conductive iron too once you unlock something new, if you are using the mystical agriculture stuff, make the seeds right off the bat. Like it's fairly easy to do. And then you can guarantee yourself a unlimited supply, especially if you start going into automated farming, which is what we're looking at next. So flying is done. Let's, let's, let's mark that one off. Boom. So then next is automated craft harvesting is what we're gonna do with on this one. And now this one, we are going to use a farmer to get this. And there's two, I, I love, actually, so there's, there's two things here. There's the farmer and the farming station. The farming station is fantastic. I love it. You need the Z-Logic controller to do that, which you need this ice and spice, which is, we're kind of going down a, a longer, you need some solium ingots. It's a little bit more intuitive. These ones can be upgraded with the different levels of capacitors to get bigger space. So you need less of them overall, but good starting spot is a farmer. Farmer does not take too much. It needs some seeds. It needs this casing, which the casing is fairly easy. You just need iron sticks and black quartz. Black quartz can be found in certain loot bags, as well as you can sift soul sand through a flint stiffened mesh to get some of it. I did, I would say I probably did 13 soul sands and I got one and nine nether quartz. And that's never a bad idea to have more nether quartz. So that's what I needed to get that. So we've got our iron casing and then we take that and you need these Inori crystal blocks. What the hell is that? Well, we did get an atomic reconstruction going on in one of our previous episodes. And this lets you kind of change things over to different items. So this one, all you need is a block of iron, zap it with the thing, and you get that Inori crystal block. So very easy to make. You've got lots of iron by this point. So you get that, you get your seeds, you get your casing, and there's your farmer. Farmers, all they require is a little bit of power. And, oh God. I can fly, I can fly, I can fly, I can fly, I can fly. I feel like Peter Pan. So, I mean, I've got a farmer sitting out right over here. Already hooked up. God, slime boots, stop it. Um, you put your seeds in your left-hand side here. You make sure it's got some power, which is why I've got these uh, solar panels up top. Hopefully try to build up some power for it. Um, I should actually get a flux point over here for my main power, but I was being quick and easy. I've got some solar panels I can pull out as needed to power things here and there. Um, and then it will plant the seeds, harvest the crops, and everything it harvests will go into the right-hand side here where we've got this Inferium Essence. And then somehow we need to tie this back to our main system. Initially I was thinking, oh, I'll use another network transmitter and uh, receiver and go from there, but the power draw is a little above what I would like right now. Uh, I'd rather use the power for the actual items, like my sag mills and everything, than the expensiveness it is to get it to pull from here to there or vice versa so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to utilize the wonderful ender chests and try not to die here i uh, i always worry with this low level and i'm going to run out of stuff all the time so ender chests guys um there are two different types but the first one does not interact well with uh, the importers exporters all that sort of jazz so we are going to go with this ender chest from ender storage and you do need two blaze rods, a wool, two obsidian, a chest, and an ender pearl. So not super expensive. The blaze rods are, like I said, the pain in the butt. So that's why we wanted to show you flying so you can get into the nether and uh, find those fortresses without trying to just build blocks all the way out to one when they could be a long, 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 long way away. So here um, we've done two because we want two chests so that they can interact. It doesn't matter what color. You can change the color by just putting a different wool up top. But you just want two that are the same color to start with. We got one, we got two. 
So now that we've got these, the cool part is they will interact. I mean, in Ender Storage, whatever you put in one will be visible and accessible in the other. So if we just take this uh, Ender Chest and plop it down there, we got stuff in there. And you can see I plopped it here because I've specifically set up an importer already so that whatever's put into the other one will get pulled into our uh, refined storage system. And then over here, I've already got this transfer node, so if I throw this guy down, and, oh, don't tell me I didn't bring my pipes. That's, ah, oh, I need my pipes. But here, so here, guys, whatever we throw in here will now be visible somewhere else. And it should, as soon as, yeah, there we go. We have to close it to let it recoup. And it will pick it up and send it through, and then import from the other side. So, no powers there. All we needed was the blaze rod, so it's a it's an efficient way to transfer your goods from one place to another without a big power consumption draw. And I am looking for my transfer pipes. Because of course I can't be pre-planned and I can't have what I need with me, right? That would be a smart thing to do, wouldn't it, guys? Uh, so if we just get that son of a bitch out of the way. Put that on over there, where we can see it just drops it all the way over. And it should be pulling it out already. So there we go, guys. We've got our automated farming. Uh, my next step will be to power this up a little bit more so it is working 24-7. But now I can have my system feeding any farm stuff it needs right back into the system. And in this case, I have started with the essences as much as I can. Because I want that to be uh, happening quickly so I can start to get to Superium stuff. But I will start putting some of my other seeds in here so that I have that ongoing constant supply. I don't have to keep switching my cloche out or making a whole bunch of other cloches. I'll save that for when we're really trying to ramp up production closer to uh, endgame and get some of the harder items to do. But there we go. Automated farming is knocked out. Let's all open the right thing, silly. Crop harvesting. I guess only harvesting we need to do, but this is actually doing the planting and the harvesting at the same time. So that's kind of cool. And like I said, we will probably eventually move up to the farming stations as we expand everything. But for now, this will work for what we need. So that's, that's the two of the main things. The uh, ender, let's take a look at the ender pouch now. Let's see, is there an actual ender pouch? Here we go, ender pouch. Oh God, guys, we could do it. We could do it. We should have everything we need. See this one, I didn't even plan ahead. I totally thought it was something about ender storage that Man, I'm just all over the place. I'm rambling. I'm trying to rush a video out. It's never a good idea. So we want the white, white, white ender pouch. Oh, no. What do I need? I literally need one piece of wool. Well, funny enough, I happen to know where I've got some wool situated. Because I was making some elevators over here. Holy shit. Two eggs, four. That's interesting. I was not expecting that many to show up. So now we've got a pouch. That was weird that it wouldn't when I just put the wool. Oh, I must have put the Inori crystal. Shame on me. But there we go, guys. We've got an ender pouch now. So this is something that will allow us to uh, move all over the place. And you can see because it's white, white, white. It's already connected. When I open this, it opens all the other chests around the world to see what's inside of it. I uh, will likely be changing the color on this or the colors of these so that I can have an actual pouch just hanging somewhere and I can kind of stash. It can be an extra storage of things that I want all over the place. Um, but there we go, guys. And it's available all over the place, so it's a nice dumping ground. But, uh, bam, I didn't even think we were going to finish that based on the start of the episode. So there we go. We've linked that. Nailed three key pieces out right now. The flying is super important. If you want to do farming stuff, the automated farming is fantastic. And ender chests are always just a godsend. So I love that we've nailed all these out. I think, um, I don't know which route. Where, where, where do you guys want me to go next? The Age of Exploration could be fun. I haven't. You know, we spent a lot of time here just kind of chilling around. We haven't done anything interesting like going to the Nether or any of that jazz. So it might be fun to do an episode of taking a few things on. Um, Age of Machines would be great to finish up because getting unlimited ingots from uh, sieving and all that stuff is always fun. Though with farming, we shouldn't necessarily need that. 
but it's always good to have those backup plans. Be farming a bit here, be cloching a bit there, be automating the iron production and other ingots there. I always like backup plans. Contingency, contingency, contingency. And then uh, I don't know where we're going to go after that. So many good things. If you've got, if you want to see something in particular, throw it down below, guys. I'd love to. I love to do it. I mean, I could. I could turn a little evil and start placing blood altars and doing all that fun stuff. Bring out the devil inside. Where <laughs> there's always more plants and stuff. Ah, oh, it should be good. So, if there's something in particular you want to see, throw it down below. I always love hearing from you guys as to what you want to see. We want this to be helpful for you. If this has been helpful, this or anything else in this series, smash that like button down below so that we know that you are benefiting from this because that's why we're doing this. We want to help out the community. Speaking of community, if you want to be part of the BJ and Co community, because this is Ben Jesse and Com or Ben Jesse and Community, we would love to uh, have you guys join us over on Discord. The link is down in the description below. Pop on in, say hi, see what games are going on, hang out in the chat channels. We love seeing the activity over there. Uh, if you guys want to see updates when all of our new content goes live, consider subscribing to the channel. You can hit the button down below. And if you want to get notified of when everything is going live, there's a little bell button right beside the sub button that will uh, allow you to get notified of when all of our content goes live. That includes live streams, videos. We're usually out four times a week in some capacity, which is always fabulous. And if you really want to help support us to help us grow this, allow more content to come out and better content, consider taking a peek at our Patreon page. We've got some cool little perks there for people that want to support us and you can do it for as little as a dollar a month so that's barely anything that's not even the price of a coffee like geez unless you got really cheap coffee somewhere and then hmm, that's interesting um but yeah guys thank you very much for being here every little view on the video goes a long way so we very much we very much appreciate everybody that stops by thank you for hanging out with us and we will see you guys in the next one we won't Monday will be when the next Minecraft video comes out, but if you want to see some interesting things between them, Tuesday night we're live streaming. Wednesday we've got a video coming out where Savvy's alone on a raft trying to survive, which is always interesting. It's a little crafting survival game. Those are always fun. And then uh, Friday we're working our way towards the end of the Turing test, which is a cool little puzzle game where um, somebody's controlling us. It's very interesting. Very neat. Lots of hidden puzzles and stuff. It's great. We're taking on a, we're actually taking on one of the restricted areas, which is a hidden puzzle, which is always fantastic. So, thanks again for watching. I'll stop rambling on, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye!